How is it going, folks? Welcome back to Park to Prem. We are back here with another transfer special to end the week. We have some brand new kits made by my viewer, YT. He makes the kits for all the series. They look wicked as always. And as of last episode, as you know, we are into a new season. We are now a National League side. The pressure is very much on to win the league, not only because according to the bookies, well, we, we might be the favourites to do it, but also because our star player, Eningoma, accidentally has a non-promotion release clause. Just to recap, I gave him a contract midway through last year that kicked in at the end of the season. I thought because I offered him that deal when we're in the National North, the non-promotion clause would apply to that league. Turns out, it doesn't work like that. So we've been promoted, and if we don't get promoted again... Well, we could lose him. Now, of course, financially, we are in a really, really good spot. Over £1 million in the bank, loads of wage budget, loads of transfer budget. We really could go crazy if we want to. But I feel like the aim for this year really has to be to try and get promoted without spending too much money. As much as it is entirely possible for me to spend all of this wage budget I've been given, doing that would just result in this graph being more kind of sloped downwards as we hemorrhage money faster and faster. And whilst we are making a load of money through sales and stuff, uh, look, we don't have the biggest following in the world. We hit a thousand Twitter followers last episode, so the, the expectations are low here. Saying all of that, at the end of last episode, I was on this screen for a moment because we were talking about the Caron Samuel sale. And as I was editing the video, I noticed I had the option to sell Brian Oconquo's sell-on clause. Now, just as a reminder, we signed this guy for £140,000. And as part of that agreement, I offered a 50% profit sell-on. Now, here's the issue here with Brian. He's a good goalkeeper. But I feel like he is really, really overvalued. Whilst he does have some good potential, I don't necessarily feel like he's going to achieve it. He's going to be 22 in just a few months' time. I imagine Preston North End are going to be looking to loan him out rather than him playing for them in League One. And with all that said, the sale of this clause... I can sell for £300,000. Now, just as a recap, we sold him for 140000 So for this 50% of profit to kick in at £300,000 or higher, he'd have to sell for over £700,000. And to be frank, I don't think he's a £700,000 player. So whilst I might live to regret this, and some people may disagree with this, I am just going to sell this clause. I am just going to take £300,000 and run. I mean, I feel like this is a no-brainer, right? Yes, we won't get any profit of any future sales, but to be honest, I don't think he's going to get near their first team. He was barely getting into our first team. I half imagine they're going to be looking to loan him out this year yet again. And that £300,000 there takes us to 1337 leaked in the overall bank balance. I realise if you're kind of my age, you understood why that's kind of funny. If, you, if you're a younger person, I don't think 1337 is a thing anymore. But let me know if it is. I don't think it is. Anyway, with that sale of the clause right there, our transfer budget now jumps up to £400,000. I really don't need all this money. I have more money than I need, and it's a problem because I kind of want to spend it. At the same time, our current first team sits at 22 players. Of course, we have got a couple of players in the under-21s I'm looking to get rid of. Caron Samuels, very likely to leave the club in the early stages of today's episode. And Captain Fantastic Jake Cartwright... I'll be honest, he's, just, he's not good enough for the first team. He's our 12th best centre-back, so I'd like to sell him. No one wanted him when I tried to sell him before. I'll try and sell him again now. I'm not expecting the most chaotic episode today, but with a load of money to spend, and I'm rather desperate to sign a defence midfielder, there is still stuff to do today. Let's run the intro, let's get down to business, and defeat the Huns, and maybe sign some players. Let's do this. I think that might be the first time ever in a video of mine I've referenced Mulan. But there you go, another reference to add to the Work the Space Bin Go card. Here we are, just as a reminder, we're bloody massive and I need a defensive midfielder. Let's go find one. So for this, I am going to update one of my recruitment focuses. Appreciate, I probably could have done this a little sooner knowing that we were going to be looking for a defensive midfielder. But you know what? There is no time like the present. And whilst we did, of course, already have one transfer special, it is only still the 1st of July, the start of the season. And it is on the 31st of July. There's loads of time to get stuff done. By loads of time, I appreciate it's actually like four weeks. So I shouldn't get too carried away. Also, players have now officially been released. Oh, of course, it's the 1st of July. Do I need to worry about any players here? 
I've got a fair few players with contracts expiring, although they have got on contract extensions. Sam Pitt, yeah, you're not going anywhere. And Goldsmith as well. Contract, no, 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 no. It's not expiring anymore. We'll have another year on that, please. Sam Kelly, by the way, 19 years old. Contract expiring. He's got an optional three-year extension. Yeah, I'm, I'm triggering that. I feel like at these lower levels where you are limited on the length of contracts you can offer players, the optional contract extensions are just so, so important for longer-term squad building. Whilst occasionally you might get stuck with a contract that's not ideal, or maybe a player who maybe you don't need anymore because you've climbed through the leagues, like Cartwright here, Ultimately, the security of having him for three more years outweighs, I think, the potential downside of with some of these players whose contracts we've just triggered, losing them for nothing when ultimately, especially in the case of Goldsmith and Pitt, they're two players who are going to be in and around the first team a lot this year. I mean, Lukaku's been released by Chelsea. Lukaku, do you want to come play for... No. Was ambitious. As we have learned during our time at rugby, though, when players' contracts expire, if they don't land clubs right away, sometimes they get a little desperate for the move. Sometimes they settle for us. So uh, with that in mind, you know, we're going to have a look at some of these players available. Firstly, because I've got plenty scouted, but also... Because I imagine if I sort by reputation, there's plenty of rather exciting players here. I looked at Onyanka last episode and he didn't want to talk to me. Does he want to talk to me? No. Okay, never mind. I'll try again next episode. Kegs Chalky might be one of the greatest names ever. And I've definitely said it incorrectly. But yeah, he's not as good as his name is. Rio Shipston is very, very good. He's really good. He was playing for Sheffield Wednesday in League One. Got promoted with them, but they've released him. He's really good. His technicals are particularly particularly impressive. Could he do a job as a defensive midfielder? I mean, he's probably not your rock defensive mid that you're looking for, but as a deep line playmaker, if you wanted a bit of a quarterback defender, he could do a job for us. And he does have 13 tackling as well. Indian international as well is rather exciting. I don't remember ever having an Indian international in a save game of mine. How much does he want? He wants to be a star player. How much are his wage demands going to be? 2.4 thousand pounds. Uh, you know what? Whilst I do have 10,000 pounds free on the wages, I feel like I do need to set a soft limit of a thousand pounds. Given the current wage structure, I feel like anything over a thousand would be silly. Really, anything over 700 would be bold, shall we say, to say the very least. Malachi Boateng. It just, it's a sexy sounding name, isn't it? But Malachi Boateng, it just sounds like a footballer's name. He was playing last year for Boston United in the National League. Prior to that, played with Crystal Palace. I wonder if he knows Ngoma. Maybe they're best mates. Yeah, I do like the look of this guy. He's naturally a defensive mid as well. And as far as defensive mids go... He ticks a lot of boxes. Gonna offer him a trial just to see if he'll lower his wage demands. Given the fact he was playing for Boston in our own division, I have to hope his wage demands aren't going to be too unreasonable. Alan Delfiera. That's definitely not how you say his name. This guy looks very good, doesn't he? He uh, hasn't got British nationality, although he is eligible for a Scottish passport. Can you, can you get that, please, so I can sign you? Uh, this guy, 25 years old. Was playing for Hibs in Scotland. Played in the Scottish Championship last year. His physicals are really, really good. He's actually quite a good centre-back. As a defensive midfielder, I don't know if I love his aggression, but his physicals are kind of nice. Could I sign him? Would he need a work permit? I don't think he would, looking at things here. What are his wage demands? £4,000, and also he would need a work permit. I'm walking away. So I'm now looking at players with contract status expired, accomplished at defence midfielder, under the age of 25, but with youth caps. There are some exciting players here. Azim Abdullahi. What a player. What a hairdo. His polygon is very, very impressive, isn't it? I feel like the best bet with a lot of these players is just going to be to offer them trials. So we'll bring him in and see what he's all about. Kyle McClelland, more of a centre-back than a defensive midfielder, but still probably worth just bringing in on trial, to be honest. Don't mind me distracting myself. I've decided to remove the defensive midfielder thing, and I'll just look at players who are 25 and younger with contract status expired, who have youth caps at international level, because there's probably some rather exciting players out here, really. Sadly, all the guys at the top are strikers but they are they do look bloody good some of these strikers amari forson i feel like this guy's really good in football manager why does his name ring a bell he's wanted by crawley he's a center mid who can also play center attacking mid he he's very good he was playing for manchester united for many a year how much does he want how, how much do he wants to be a star player if you ask for 700 pounds you're going to be my best friend 
He wants 900, and I'm very tempted. I know I don't need more attacking midfielders, but this guy is different gravy. Like, this guy, I mean, he's very, very impressive. He's really, really good. Like, too good, to be honest, for our team. Of course, Isaac Pritchard plays in the centre attacking kind of advanced playmaker position for us at the moment. I already did bring in one player who might compete there in Bradley Edwards. If we compare these two guys... I guess you'd argue that Edwards is the better player when it comes to the technicals. Maybe Pritchard is a more of a match. Obviously, he is a year younger as well. But when you then compare Pritchard to Forson, Forson makes him look like a child. Which I guess he is at 17, but that's not the point. He does want a lot of money, but we can afford it. I've got money to spend because of all the sales that we've done. How about £700? That's the same amount then Goma's on. But I'll, I'll give you... £12,000 pocket money outright, appearance fee. Let's make it 2.5. Let's make it a two-year deal, but with a contract extension after promotion. What do you say? He didn't like that that much. Amari, hear me out. £800, 250 appearance. How do you like those? He loves those. I love him. Sign him up. We are going to get a scout report on him just to be safe. And one thing that I know I've talked about before, but, you know, newer football manager players might not know about this. If you go to recruitment focuses and scout priorities, you can see all the different players that you're currently scouting. And if you want to have uh, one kind of scout report come in sooner, if you come to that specific player, in this case, Forson, select his name and then hit prioritize assignment, it'll mean that we get his scout report that little bit sooner, which is useful. I've just got distracted by the scouting screen while I'm here. There's so many players being offered to me and the scouts like the look of like we've actually got a proper recruitment team now it used to be one man and his laptop and suddenly there's five scouts and one chief scout at this club we have like a proper scouting network i love it william asula 23 years old danish this guy's mad who is he playing for sheffield united I mean, does he does he want to join us? Does, uh, if Forza wanted to join us, does this guy want to join us? Star player wants us to get promoted. How much is he going to ask for? Four thousand pounds. Okay, never mind. I'll put William on the the maybe pile. It's a bit of a big maybe though. Decided with all the players that I was looking at, rather than you know just teasing them and stuff. Why not ask them on a date? Why not invite all of those players that were popping up in that list that look very very good? on trial. I can get a proper review of them. I don't have to pay to scout them either. Everyone's a winner. Don't like the fact that Malachi Boateng turned down my advances though. Not a fan of you, Malachi. Thought you were one of the good ones. As is becoming traditional at this point, all the players I've just brought on trial have stuck in the under-21s to review. The first we have is Gabriel Biancheri. One cap for Wales. He's capped for Wales. He was released by Manchester United. I don't need a striker, but he's really good. I mean, he's capped for what? You've got to be good to get an international cap for Wales at 20. How much does he want? I guess this is the bit where he's either going to break my heart or he's going to seem like a genius. Apparently, he's a League One quality player. <sighs> he only wants a thousand pounds. It's very reasonable. Just for a bit of context, here is Gabriel next to Abbas. I mean, he makes Abbas seem absolutely crap, doesn't he? I feel like I've got to try and sign him. He's already a League One quality player. I, I can't offer him too much, but I'll give him 900 quid. Surely he's going to like the sounds of this. How does this look, mate? Just do 900, please. How about, okay, new deal. 800 pounds, so a little bit less than what I offered before, but I'll give him more money as a signing on fee. That way, um, his wages aren't going to be super high that players in the dressing room look around and go, hey, I want that much, and he still gets a load of money. Everyone's a winner. He's agreed to that deal. I really hope no one else comes in for him now. In terms of the other players we've brought in, Ellis Chella, Seller, is the other player who's kind of rather highly rated. I actually remember looking at this guy um, when the initial inbox item came out in April telling me about all the Premier League teams marking young players for release. He is a decent little centre-back, come-right-back option, but like uh, Batumba, kind of a very similar mould of player. And I've already signed Batumba, who... I don't know, it's a bit of a... It's hard to tell the difference between who might be better, but Batumba is on £120 a week as a breakthrough prospect. I have a sneaking suspicion Ellis is going to want to be a starter and want some silly money. 
Yeah, he is. I'm not going to sign him. Azim Abdullahi, I looked at as that defensive midfielder option. He's not the best defensive midfielder in the world, but I do really like his physicals. He's a really well-rounded player with some good ability with the ball at his feet. Fairly professional personality is nice with some okay determination. Consistent too. Currently a good player for National League sides. How much money does he want? You know, if he has a reasonable wage demand, I'd be very keen to sign him up. Oh my, he's going to be really cheap. I think I've got to pick him up. I'm going to offer him a three-year deal, £150 uh, per week. I'm going to then offer him uh, kind of a, a lower appearance fee, but not, not a small amount. I feel like something like this is a fair deal for everyone. And he agrees. You know what? For 24 uh, years old, very solid player, really well-rounded player. We do lack a little bit of depth in that centre mid department. So uh, yeah, I think this could be a good picker. Last episode, we sold Ben Perry. I feel like Azeem here could be, I was going to say the Ben Perry replacement. That really is disrespectful, isn't it, to Azeem's ability. He's more than a replacement. He is an upgrade. One thing I am a little bit conscious of at the moment is the fact that my under-18s has 33 people in it, and if we just sort by information here, there's a decent amount of these players over the age of 19. With the under-18 league, the way it works is players here marked as over-18s uh, are able to play in the starting 11, but you can only have two players in the match day squad of these 18-year-olds. Players over the age of 19, all of these guys highlighted, cannot play in the under 18s. I don't have an under 21s that play regular matches. There's some players with some okay potential here. Obviously, Ducker, the streets will remember, but even players like Ducker, even players like Odan, I, I, don't, I don't see them fulfilling their potential. So I'm stuck between a bit of a rock and a hard place, but given the fact I don't have a youth academy to move these players into, Probably going to look to loan them out or in some cases, maybe even just try and cash in on them. Not going to get a load of money, but there's pretty much no point in having these players staying at the club right now because they can't play with the youth team. I think with all these players, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer them out for an unspecified amount and see if I get any interesting transfer offers worth considering. A fair few of them do have contracts expiring at the end of the current year anyway. Um, but yeah, ultimately with these players, with the exception of Meredith, who have already sorted out a loan for... There's just no reason to have them here. I do feel bad for Joffel Jackson Davis. He was one of the original players back in the day. He spent the last couple of years out on loan. Actually had a really good loan spell with Leek. Then had a good spell with Evesham. They had a, a clause where they could sign him permanently. He scored 17 goals. They still didn't sign him permanently. So he's back here for now. Sadly, I think with a lot of these players like Tom Martin here, whilst they're good players, um, or rather they were good players, with where we are now, they're of no use to me and they just don't have any resale value. So if I got bids of nothing, there's probably a few of these players I would just give away. Ah, Bradford, Bristol Rovers, Notts County, York City and Salford have all offered bids to... Gabriel, I really want to sign this guy. I can't really afford to offer him more than £800. Shall I just give him and his agent a load of money? I'll, I'll give him £50 more. I'm going to offer his agent and himself a load of money. Maybe I should try and get three years for the promotion extension. I have a sneaking suspicion he's not coming our way. And Charlton and Burton have made bids for Azeem. Oh, I absolutely hate it here. Azeem, I'll give you £200 extra. And if you sign for me, £20,000. That is... That's maybe a bit too generous, but I just like his haircut. It's a sad day, but Fabio Duck has had some offers for him. They are for absolutely nothing, but I don't want to pay him £150 for the next year. He doesn't look like he's going to renew his contract with us. We don't have a youth team to play him in, so I'm just going to get rid of him while I can. Stevenage have made a bid for Amari Forson. I hate it here. Am I'll give him more money. Am Amari, I'll give you £60,000. If you want to sign with me, mate, we will be best friends forever. I'll offer you the three-year deal as well. Surely he's going to sign this. I'm not being funny. If I sign Amari Forson and I sign Biancheri here, they are two players I could see playing with me all the way to the championship. And I really want to sign them. I hate the fact I've got attached to the idea of signing them because I don't think I'm going to get any of them. Ah, Adam Abbas thinking about getting a new contract. Mate, how long's your current deal for? You've got two years left on it, son. You're on £400. You're earning the big bucks. Ah, oh, I can't afford it. I'll just lie. Can't afford it. Don't let him, don't let him see the bank balance. Don't let him know we've got over a million pounds just sat there. Barnsley have made a bid for Slate. Non-negotiable offer, £57,000. You might remember last year I agreed I'd sell him if I got a bid of £500,000. 
That is not £500,000. Blackpool have made a bid for Azeem. I don't think we're getting Azeem. Gabriel Bancheri has had some offers for him. Don't think we're getting him. Uh, Ducker, loads of offers. Favisham have offered £10,000. Hello. Can, can we do a little bit more, Favisham? 12000 12, and just a... 50% profit, how does that sound? They love it. Right, I was I was getting ready to give him away. I don't need to give him away now. Look at this, I had all these offers of zero pounds I was about to accept. Get rid of these, I'm selling him to Faversham for 12k. Fleetwood Town in financial crisis. They have a debt of 26 million pounds. They've been deducted 10 points in our division. Can you remember last year when we were in the FA Cup and I mentioned the fact that financially, they looked in the absolute bin with their loan debt. They had back-to-back -back relegations. They've now been given, they've actually been given a 10-point point deduction before the season's begun. Maybe we should have let them win the FA Cup game. I feel guilty. The administrators have indicated they'll consider any reasonable transfer offers. Who's their best player? This guy. Is he any good? He's quite good. Should we just steal him? I'll say that. He's on £2.5,000 a week. No wonder they're in financial crisis. I I've just looked at their first team. Sorry, this is their first team? What's the rest of their team looking like? Oh, God. I'll tell you what. If you want a really difficult football manager save game, Fleetwood Town in this universe. What has happened here? Should I just make an offer to loan him for the year? I would have to pay all his wages. I don't want to do that. Yeah, good luck, Fleetwood. Uh, you're, you're, good luck. Yeah, good luck. I don't, don't know what else to tell them. They're, they're, they're absolutely screwed. They've got one player who's a senior first-team player. All the rest of their players are youth players. Portsmouth have made a bid for Hold Chuddy, just like at last episode. No one values him. They're offering less than a £1,000. No, I can't get over the Fleetwood Town situation. They're predicted to finish bottom. I feel, I do feel bad for them. I do feel bad for them. Alex Fisher's come in to be their new manager. Good luck, mate. I, I feel like they're getting another relegation. I don't understand how they're £26 million pounds in debt. Like, how does that happen? I, madness. Okay, Karan Samuels is leaving the club. £55,000. Not the craziest sum of money, but to be fair, for our seventh best centre-back... I still feel like it's quite good business. Joined us on a free transfer a couple of years ago. Back-to-back -back promotions just mean he is down the pecking order. Let's get some money for him. And if you were wondering, no news from Forson, Biancheri, or Abdullah yet. Just anxiously waiting. If I get all three of these players, the transfer episode just finishes. We're definitely not getting all of them. We're probably not getting any of them. Isaac Pritchard's kicking up a stink. Thinks he's underpaid. He kind of is. 17 years old. He's on £50 a week. Let's offer him a new contract, but it's going to be a contract that kicks in at the end of the current season. That, that's where I'm willing to negotiate things. I don't know if he's going to hate me for this, but I'm going to hold firm. He wants £800 that kicks in at the end of the year. He's currently on £50. That's a lot of money, isn't it? That's a lot of money. I, I feel like because this year I, I have a sneaking suspicion he will drop down the pecking order slightly. Rather than sign him to a new deal, maybe I'll offer him a new contract halfway through this year when maybe I can lower his squad status slightly. He did play every single league game for us last year and was outstanding, but I feel like when you look at the team, while star ratings aren't the bill or end all, it's kind of evident he is maybe just one of the weak links. Two bids made for Holchuddy. I mean, they are getting slightly bigger. Middlesbrough have offered me £11,000 for him. I mean, it's better than some of the offers I've been getting, but... I feel like he's worth way more than that. The fact they're 19 years old, he's attracting this kind of interest from championship clubs makes me convinced that he does have some really good potential. What would I sell him for? What would... I mean, the name is invaluable, isn't it? That is the issue. Birmingham City have offered 900 quid. They can do one. Middlesbrough have made this offer. I'm going to be very cheeky here and just ask for 250,000. If they were to offer that, I'd absolutely take it off them, but I don't think they're going to offer that. No, no, they're not. How about 225,000? No. I'm fortunate enough to be in a situation where I don't need to sell players. I do have question marks over how good Holchard he actually is. I do feel like his technicals are always going to hold him back. So if I was to get a bid, you know, I would have to consider it if it was a reasonable one. The more I negotiate here, the more I question, am I going to get what I deem a reasonable bid? And I'm beginning to think the answer is no. I feel like 150000 is the very least I would sell him for. Middlesbrough don't think enough progress has been made, so don't want to make an initial decision. There's, look, the reality is I probably should sell him for 100000 and just run away 
but he is a starter for us. I don't need the money. It's not like I, I'm desperate to bring anyone in. Of course, if Azeem came in, there is a chance that whole Chuddy would be the man to make way, and he almost certainly would be in the starting eleven. But at the same time, it's a whole Chuddy. He's 19 years old. He's got the whole work life and world ahead of him to conquer, and... I don't want to lose my a-hole for nothing. Ah, Gabriel Biancheri has agreed to join Notts County on £4,000 a week. Yeah, I, I just can't compete with that. He's gone to a team in League One. My expectations were too high, weren't they? I mean, of the three players I was looking to sign, he's the one who I didn't need the most. If Forson or Abdullah come to us, it will be massive. Forson's only had two bids from ourselves and Stevenage. Abdullah more competition for his signature. A load of League One teams have made bids. Middlesbrough have made a new bid for Holchuddy. They've bid 12,000. What what are you doing here, Middlesbrough? I've told you, 150k and you can have him. I'm just going to reject it. I don't need to sell him. Amari Forson has agreed to join Stevenage. £1.7,000 a week. I'll tell you what, in a few seasons, I'd be signing an insane squad. If we were a League One team, we'd be conquering that division and going into the championship with some of the players I was looking to sign. But we're not at that level, and I suppose that shows by the amount of players who were just turning me down. Has also dawned on me, and it's a little late for this to dawn on me, not really got that many games going on during pre-season. I'm going to schedule a load here. We have got a load of trialists in who will also be able to feature in the games to help with rotation. Blackpool sign Azeem. Well, we are zero for free on the players I wanted to sign, and... <laughs> I've not got any other players I'm looking to sign right now. It's a great start to the episode. I say start, we're like 20 minutes in. But even if I don't sign anyone today, which I'm hoping we will sign someone, um, it's not going to be full-blown panic stations. It just means we'll get transfers done a little later. But, I mean, we've still got three weeks left. I was really confident with a month till the season started. I'm already starting to panic. I do want to show you guys one of the least efficient ways to find players, but it's still a way to find players uh, if you're playing at this kind of level, and that is to include a homegrown status at club, trained at 0 to 21, and then just choose big clubs. So you could just go through all the, the Premier League teams. Not As I said, not necessarily efficient, but if you want to really quickly look at potentially some good players, because they've come through, say, the Academy of Arsenal here, this is a way you can find some players. Jordan Shepard here was released by Arsenal, for example. I mean, he is not terrible, is he? He's not terrible, but he's already got bids on him by League One and League Two teams. So I'm not going to waste my time. A few of the young players I looked at before, like Forson and the Welsh bloke, they were, they were playing for Manchester United. So I might as well look at the Manchester United released youngsters. I mean, if you played for Manchester United, you'd think they'd be quite good, wouldn't you? There is actually one of the players here who I've already got scouted. Alfie Davidson. Geasley have made an offer in the division below us. Ah, uh, he's, he's not bad. He's not great. Tom Wooster has a fantastic name. He's not wooing me, though. He has some really bad cons. Like I mentioned already, this is not the most efficient way to look at players, but you know what? We'll just do it. Here are players that were released by Man City's Academy that have played for them. I mean, there's a few of these players I remember already looking at. Easily could offer a lot of these players trials as well if I wanted to. But, I mean, you can see here, looking at the general quality of some of these players... They're really not bad. Nico O'Reilly here was playing for Watford. Actually played a few times in the championship for them. He's a centre mid who can play centre attacking mid. I don't need another one of these kind of players. If you were wondering, Jackie, are you really doing this with all the big teams? Uh, currently on Crystal Palace. So yeah, I've gone through all the major Premier League players. Now I'm on to teams like Crystal Palace who do produce some usually okay players in Football Manager. I know this might not be everyone's idea of fun, I do get some weird sick pleasure from this. I can't explain it. I was hoping at this point I'd have a player to jump back to and go, this is why I search for players like this. It's not happened. I'm looking at Everton's release youngsters. The, there's no one leaping out the page. So I, 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 I could keep doing this with every team. I could go down to championship clubs. I might be bored already. Bad news, uh, Josh Chambers, torn groin muscle. If you're sat thinking, who's Josh Chambers? He's one of the players I've got in on trial. Uh, sorry, Josh, uh, you're out. Okay, Lyle Lennon is leaving the club. He was a player who we took a punt on a few years ago. Hasn't really worked out. We're getting £600 for him. And I thought we were going to be saying goodbye to Fabio Ducker, except he's just turned down Fabersham. I was about to make a load of money. Uh, now I might be going back to giving him away.
Tell you what, A-hole Chuddy, loads of interest in him. Pompey have now made a bid. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with Middlesbrough. 150k, someone can have him. If you're not willing to pay the 150k, you can't have him. That's how it works. They didn't want to pay the 150k. I have just stumbled across this guy. Very excitedly added him to the Wonder Kid shortlist. Tom Moore was playing for the Scottish under-21s team. 17 years old. He's playing in the Scottish Championship with Queen's Park where he's playing regularly. He's available for zero to £90,000. He doesn't want to join me, sadly. But he is absolutely insane. I I'll tell you what, if... <laughs> The amount of players we found this episode who would have been mad in a few years' time is crazy. I have to hope that no one finds this guy, because I'm desperate to sign him. I don't even play with wingers. I'll play with wingers if I sign him. We've hit that point in the episode where I'm looking for obscure leagues, Media Dream 11s, just to see if there's any exceptionally good young players I've potentially not been made aware of. O'Reilly here is on £1 a week. We'll, we'll get a scout report. Lewis Gillespie is 19 years old. Why does this guy's name ring a bell? I don't know. He's not on the new gen watch list. I'm going to add him to the watch list. 17 finishing. It's a shame he can't run. Realise I'm doing everything in my power to avoid just looking for a defensive midfielder. We have got some players scouted here, but there's no one who, like, leaps off the prep page. There's no one here who I look at. And I suddenly feel, like, desperate to sign. It's a bit of a sad state of affairs, really. I was hoping that maybe the recruitment focus to find a defensive midfielder might find someone for us. But to be honest, well, there's there's no recommendation. So it's not going to plan. Honestly, of all the players I've looked at, Rio Shipston is the best of the bunch. Still kind of looking around for players. Of course, he was a player we looked at really early on. Doesn't want to talk to me after the previous breakdown in talks, though. I mean, you know what? I'll shoot my shot. I'll offer him a trial. He'll probably turn it down. Yeah, uh, he, he has turned me down. Predictable. I realise I've done two transfer specials in the last two days. We've signed one player and I've edited the first half of this video just now. We're like over a half an hour into this video. This is probably going to be an hour long special. So consider this your Christmas present from me. Although, like I mentioned last episode, we will have an upload upon Christmas Day and the 27th Boxing Day, day after Christmas. There's loads of Premier League football on, so rather than me rush out to get a video done for that day, I'm not going to bother. I hope that's okay. I mean, if anyone does have an issue with me not getting loads of videos pre-recorded over the Christmas period, uh, I'm sorry. I, there's not a lot else I could do. I'd say issue a complaint with my manager, but I am my manager. It's great. I do love football manager logic. I was just looking through defensive midfielders and a random Ukrainian player came up and I was sat thinking, well, he, he plays in Ukraine. Like, why is he on my radar? And then I remembered that David Kolodinsky has extensive knowledge of Ukraine. So as a result of his knowledge of Ukraine, we randomly have Ukrainians sometimes show up in the player searches. I love David. By the way, if you were wondering, I am slowly but surely getting rid of some of the players in the under 18s. Most of them you've not really heard of, like Tom Martin here, who we're just selling for £300. But yeah, we are slowly but surely trimming down that youth team. It's just not really that interesting to put in the video. I say we're trimming it down. Still 32 players, so a little way to go. Also, shout out to the board. They've just increased the number of scouts we can have up to six. So I'm going to go find another scout. And also, I have just resorted to giving away Ducker again because none of the teams actually want to pay money for him. He wants to go to. And I don't want to pay £150 a week to keep him around. He's miserable. I do sometimes get people ask, Jack, can you show how you find staff members? Well, I'll show you. If I want to find a scout, I just select staff Role scout then for pick attributes i just go for scout then i'll just set them to a certain level until people show up like lyndon goss here who doesn't seem terrible i mean these scouts i'm looking at are all okay but they all just have knowledge of england i want someone who has exotic knowledge like jeff's ibrom here who has knowledge of the cook islands and samoa I feel like of all the nations you could have knowledge of, it's probably not the most useful. He's the coach of the Cook Islands, I've just noticed, and chief scout of Tamworth. His actual scouting attributes are very, very good, though. Uh, he wants to be the chief scout. You can't be the chief. We already have a chief of this tribe, but I'll give you 300 quid. How does that sound? Or 200 quid. I don't know how to do numbers. He's accepted it. It's fine. I could go with someone like Warren Hawke here, who has slightly worse attributes, but has some knowledge of Scotland. I realise I'm thinking about trying to sign someone with some exotic foreign nation knowledge. The reality is anyone with some exciting foreign nation knowledge probably isn't going to want to join me anyway. And whatever nation they have knowledge of is probably going to be players who I can't sign because of work permit. So you know what? We'll just go with Jess and his knowledge of the Cook Islands. The Cook Islands have one top player. They have one player in the entire save game. 
Daryl Savage, um, you'll notice here, I haven't updated my regen faces for the very latest intake players. He's got two caps. He looks awful. To be fair, he does also have knowledge of Samoa, where there's this guy from Samoa. Uh, he's never played for a club. This has just jogged my memory. Remember Taul or Taul when we signed Shvetsov who generated without a club? There are some players generating without clubs. Am I about to go for all the national teams in Europe looking for youngsters that are free agents at the age of 16 that generated as free agents? Did this guy generate as a... No, he didn't generate as a free agent. For people who don't know what I'm doing right now, I'm looking for all the under-18s teams. Essentially, players in Football Manager generate at football clubs, for the most part, in youth intakes. But you do get a handful of players that will just generate from absolutely nowhere. They don't appear at a club, and as a result of that, their kind of potential ability and current ability isn't tied to a club's facility, but more so the nation they generate in. So as a result of that, these players tend to have really low reputation. Sometimes they get called up for youth teams so you can find them before they've actually signed a professional deal. And often these players have extremely low wage demands. Um, I'm looking for all these nations. There's no really good example showing up yet. So this might be a completely fruitless task. I think I've gone through every single under 18 team and there wasn't any good examples. On to the under 19s. Tell you what, look at all these exciting young players that I have no chance of actually signing. It, it, it's like window shopping. You might have noticed, Jack, you are no longer in Europe anymore looking for these players. No, I've gone to Africa instead. Not that any of these players are actually going to want to sign for me that I'm looking for from the various African under-20 teams, but I just want to find a good example of one of these players who generate as free agents and aren't just released from a football club. I feel like Egypt's always a good nation for this thing. If I was going to have my money on a nation to have one of these example players, it'd be Egypt. I'll be honest, Egypt, you have let me down. Just found this guy playing for a team in Madagascar. That's not the focus of it. I want to discuss this football team's name, CFF Andoharan off of to see. Really rolls off the tongue. Come for the transfer special, stay for some Madagascan football trivia. I mean, what more could you want? I feel like these players aren't as common as they used to be. I I've moved on to North America. I'll tell you what, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it, if I just found a random player who I could actually sign, like playing for Suriname. That'd be fun. Sorry, there's a team in the British Virgin Islands called the Sugar Boys. It's like a spin-off of the Spice Girls. I've just spent the last 10 minutes flicking through every nation in the game. Unktola is an example. Cambodian international, generated as a free agent. Cambodia don't produce good players, though, so his attributes are quite poo. I feel like this is a regen scouting method for the patient gamer out there. It's the kind of thing where you want to do it throughout the year. I find that usually, actually, doing it in March time is the best time to do it, around where a lot of the intakes in Europe are going on. But yeah, you'll occasionally just find players like Bold Ardene Vanichihu of Mongolia. Um, <laughs> what are these players might be good? I'm going to keep searching. I'm not being funny. This guy who's a Syrian international looks good. 19 years old, released by Helsingor. Does, it, does he want to join us? I feel like this is a bold attempt of a signing. Yeah, he doesn't want to join me. I am fully aware that I started off this episode by saying that I, I needed to find... Um, a defensive midfielder. Instead, I'm here looking at the North Korean national team. For some reason, seeing this guy with a hyphenated name, who's not very good, I'm going to be honest, it reminded me of a man. That man, Noel Breton Mabulu, Park to Prem Hall of Famer. Remember the name? Yeah, he's a free agent in this universe. He's actually just been released by Ren. I had been keeping an eye on him. I assume he won't get a work permit, but he was amazing for us last year in Park to Prem. He wants £1.6,000. Also, why does he not need a work permit? Noah, why did it not mention work permits when I tried to sign you? What's the cat chair? You know what? Rather than offering him a contract, I'll offer him a trial first. That's probably a better way to evaluate him. I think given the fact he was asking for over £1,500, it's probably a no-go, but you can't say I didn't try. He's turned me down. Never mind. I do still keep thinking about William Asula, the Dane, the great Dane. He looks very, very good. He's not found a club. No one wants him. I really want him. He should come to us. Will he now accept a trial? He turned down my offer before and he was asking for £4,000 a week. But you know what? It's two weeks later. He still hates me. This is not good news. Isaac Pritchard out for up to two months. Missed zero games last year. He will not be here for the start of the season. That's annoying. Isaac Pritchard gets injured for two months, then decides he wants to talk about having a new contract. Can your agent resolve the issue? Oh, stop badgering you. I don't like his agent. The club cannot afford it right now. Uh, you're not going to change my mind. Like, I'm not being funny. 
You just got injured for two months. You've got two years left on your current deal. Yeah, you're on £50 a week. And yeah, you are a star player for us this year just gone. But I don't know if he's going to be starting as much this year. Like, fair enough, in my preliminary starting 11, he is in the starting 11. But actually, Bradley Edwards, you could certainly make a pretty compelling argument, should be starting ahead of him in that advanced playmaker role. In fact, when you look at it here really should will be starting in that role not just because he's injured he probably would have started there anyway i've still not found a defensive midfielder by the way the scouts are continuing to look i rate them for it we're also looking just at strikers because why not look for strikers there could be a good bonus buy out there my other scouts are looking at youngsters that they rate highly there's actually some interesting players here as well asula is at the top of the list um but besides that you know there, there are some good exciting young players here like zane silcott Dubbery. i mean if you ask him what position he can play he just replies with the answer yes that's actually mad. He can literally play, well, not everywhere, but almost everywhere. I've decided to go and have another chat with Rio Shipston. I still really like the look of this guy as a more defensive midfield option for us. I feel like his wage demands are still going to be high. Yeah, I was hoping he might have lowered them. He has not lowered them. Our staff have recommended that we mutually terminate the contract of Jovel Jackson Davis. I've tried selling him. No one wants him. He has actually agreed to a termination for £6,000. So, you know what? I'm a nice guy. I care about this bloke. He came in as one of our very early transfers. I'm just giving him £6,000 to piss off. It's kind of me, if anything. Jess Ibrom is joining us as a scout. I feel like for £200 a week, his actual scouting attributes are mad. Naturally, once we expand our scouting a little bit more, we'll get a bit more knowledge. Really thinking about it... Probably could set up a few more scouting assignments now that we have more staff. Maybe even have some recruitment focuses kind of around the UK as opposed to just in England. I want you lads to go out to the region that is the UK and Ireland and just go find players that might be useful for the first team. Like, they don't need to be superstars. Just find me some people. And in fact, I'm going to set up a similar search but one that is looking for slightly younger players maybe with a bit more potential so i haven't been able to secure cartwright and move away from the club on a permanent basis but we did get some loan offers hungerford have actually offered to pay 90 percent of his wages if he's playing regular football if he's an unused sub they'll pay all of his wages I'm going to take that. I feel like that's a happy ending for everyone. Kind of funny, when you look at the squad, there's this sea of two and a half star ability players that you might look at and go, Jack, are you not worried about that? But the weird thing is a two and a half star player in our team is a decent Vanarama National League player. In fact, even some of these kind of worst players like Gucci are still good players and leading players for the division that we've just come out of. So as sub options for us... They're still very, very good players. Whilst we don't have a super big squad, the actual depth we do have is really, really good. It's a weird situation because I know there's some people probably watching thinking, just spend the money. But the reality is with our current reputation, there's not that many players I can actually sign for transfer fees. And I don't really feel like I need to splurge on any one position. Like if there was some really obvious defensive admit who was available, who was available for, you know, a transfer fee, I'd probably go in for them. But when you actually look at some of the more expensive options here, they're just not that good. Like even the more expensive ones, like, you know, I don't really want to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on mediocrity because I think there's actually players better than these players that I could attract from other clubs who are just sat as free agents. And it might be a case of I've not found them. It might be a case of the scouts need to unearth them. Could also just be a case of at the moment, they don't see our club as a good move in a few weeks when they're still free agents. Maybe they change their mind. I was just looking here. Players transfer listed, transfer interest doubtful. Here's the options. Untick this. Top player, Vir Virgil van Dijk. Yeah, uh, van Dijk had a spell in Saudi Arabia. He's now a free agent. Verg. Do you want to come to rugby? No. Well, I, you, you know what? I'll put that in the thumbnail. I tried to sign Virgil van Dijk. People have to get 40 minutes in to find out that we didn't sign him, but it's a great thumbnail. It might be foolish. I might just hold out for Virgil van Dijk. He might want to join me eventually. Pro probably not. Probably just retire. But I don't know. Maybe he likes rugby. Okay. Preseason odds from whoscored.com. They have ourselves and Rochdale neck and neck, which on the one hand... That's great that we're tipped to do really, really well. On the flip side, Rochdale, who have a media prediction of first, are a good team, and only one team goes up this year. So the fact we've got even odds with them, 
it's, it's probably going to be a battle against Rochdale. When do we play Rochdale in the season? We don't play them until kind of mid-October, where from the looks of things, we have a ridiculous schedule in that month. That is silly. Jasper Moon is asking about a new contract. Oh, how much do you want? It's annoying because he doesn't have an agent that I can ask for how much he wants. So I have the option here during the talk of, do I promise him a new contract or do I say things won't be handed out for free? I'm going to tell him I'll offer him a contract. If his wage demands are unreasonable here, I'm not going to, you know, pander to him. I do feel like he is a very, very good player for us, but I'm also a bit concerned he might have an inflated value kind of of self-worth. He wants £1,700. No. Just as a reminder, our current highest earner on £700 a week. He wants more than double our current highest earner, and now he's upset that I've not kept a promise that I made not knowing how much he'd want. I promised contract talks, not the deal you were demanding. I think that, I think that is beyond fair. I was really happy with our defence. If he now tries to force a move, that's going to be annoying. Don't think I've done this in a video this year in Park to Prem, but if you are enjoying this video, let me know down in the comments your favourite flavour of ice cream. And if you don't like ice cream, what your favourite pizza is. And if you love both, why not answer both questions? I, I'm just going to put this question in the middle. Don't add any context to your comments. Just allows me to know how many people actually watch the videos through, especially when it's a really long video like this one. This is probably going to be the longest transfer special ever because I'm trying to get transfers done. But it, yeah, it gives me a gauge of, do people actually stay engaged with the content? Do they watch lots of it? Do people just skip through? So uh, yeah, and also comments feed the algorithm. You know how YouTube works, that pesky algorithm. Yeah, comments just feed it. So yeah, let me know ice cream and pizza. My cookie dough ice cream, Mexican pizza for me. Like, uh, you know, spicy pepperoni kind of Mexican pizza. I feel like they don't even have that pizza in Mexico, but they just label it as Mexican pizza. Make of that what you will. Portsmouth have made a bid for A-hole. Of course they have. I've told you, lads, 150k and you can have him. That That is the deal I'm negotiating. Go away. Watford have made a bid for Ducker. Why, why have Watford in League One made a bid for Fabio Ducker? And why have they offered me nothing? Look, Watford, I want 100k. I know you guys have money. They don't have money. He's going to hate me for that because Watford have made a bid. The other teams I'm looking to sell him to are teams in the Ismian League South Central Division and in the various regional German divisions. He probably would have quite liked that move to League One. Squad numbers to be decided. Auto number. Some people care about squad numbers. I'm not that guy. Vanarama National League top goal scorer odds are in. Adam Abbas predicted top goal scorer behind him. Anto Murphy, who we looked at, I think, either last episode or earlier in this one. Elsewhere, Shaquille O'Dan. Remember the guy who couldn't play right back, who I signed to play right back because I got all giddy and excited? Turns out he was crap, and now he's refusing to go to Trafford. Annoying. I've offered him mutual termination. He doesn't want that. If I did just want to pay to get rid of him, it's £2,500. Look, so someone bid nothing and I'll accept it. And hopefully he'll go to them. The squad are not happy with the treatment of Jasper Moon. Just as a reminder, Jasper Moon has just asked for £1,700 a week wages. And I've said no. Like He's asking for unreasonable amounts. The, he's asking for... I'm going to kick a chair as, as I say it. He's asking for unreasonable amounts. They're all disappointed. I won't kick a chair anymore. I'm going to raise my hands and just say I'm disappointed. This was a chance to work things out, but all I've learned is that I have some very unprofessional players on my hand. I feel like I am pissing off half the dressing room here, but I'll tell them it how it is. It is a bit annoying, isn't it, that Jasper Moon is one of the more influential players. I could just try and sell him. He is wanted by teams. How to deal with a mutiny. Step one, sell the player who's trying to start the mutiny. If I did let him go, like, there are actually centre-backs that exist. I mean, newsflash, there are centre-backs in the world of football. More news at 10. What I'm trying to say is, as good as he is, like, there, there is other players I could just bring in. Like, Slate could easily play in at centre-back if he started being annoying. Sean Stewart only has 10 jumping reach, I will admit it, but if you compare him with Jasper Moon, like, he's not that much worse, really. In fact, you could argue he's better anyway. Just, he's not as good in the air. The more I think about it, the more I do feel like if Moon is just going to be a pain in the arse and ask for a load of money I can't offer him and then try and upset players, I'll just go out and sign someone. Like, Chris Moore here is very good. Formerly of Leeds United, plays for Cardiff Met Uni on an amateur contract. If I compare this guy with Jasper Moon, 
Like, he's, he's probably better than Moon. Rather than planning a signing of a replacement, I should probably wait and see if anyone actually bids on him first. Uh, bids for Ducker, but that's not really who I need bids for right now. By the way, because I like tormenting myself, Tom Moore, the really good Queen's Park player. I thought I'd get a scout report on him. Super consistent player, like green consistency. Apparently a championship standard player. He's available for less than £90,000 a week. The fact that no one in the Premier League has found this guy yet, is kind of mad. Top player odds, by the way. We don't have the top, top favourite player to be top player, but we do have Murphy and Goma. Charlie Webster here is the favourite to be the top player in the division. He's on £1,800 a week. That is mental. Team leader meeting. Jasper Moon's unhappiness is causing unrest. We might be running out of time. We are running out of time, right? Gucci, Simkin think he deserves a new contract. There is a great atmosphere in the dressing room at the minute. Don't spoil that by allowing his issues to affect all of you. They all hate me. I need to sell Jasper Moon. That is, that is the conclusion I've come to. He is a snake in the grass. He could cause me long-term issues. He has to go. I mean, if I could get a few hundred thousand pounds for him, he doesn't strike me as a player who's irreplaceable. I can't actually offer him out again at the moment because I've already offered him out once. I feel like Forrest Green were listed as interested. I've now offered him out and now they've pissed off. Brilliant. Cartwright is going on loan. RIP, uh, well, heading merchant prince. Have fun playing for Hungerford. No offers for Jasper Moon. I'll tell you what we're doing now. We're transfer listing him. Been asked to pick a captain for the coming year. I mean, Gucci doesn't really play enough to be captain. Gucci's currently vice captain. I feel like I should keep him there. We don't really have a natural leader. I mean, we have players with good leadership, but they're also like 12 years old, like Slate. And Goma doesn't have the best leadership, but he does have 17 teamwork. And you know what? I know that he's going to be here for the long haul. As long as we get promoted, I'm going to make him the captain. Moon no longer wants a new deal, everyone. He said he's happy to forget about the affair due to the interest being shown in him. So if a player's unhappy and wants to leave the club, just try and sell them. Basically, that's what we've learned here. David Robinson is another one of the crap youth players who I'm just getting rid of. I mean, he's got grey stars for current ability. His polygon makes me sad. Thank you for your service, David. Goodbye. Got a list here of players currently in the last year of their contracts. According to my staff, there's none that we should be considering extending the contracts of. Of first team players, we've got Talon and Freckleton here, who are probably going to be backups. In terms of the players with some decent potential, um, well, some of them are currently on their way out of the club. And to be honest, I just don't think that many of them are even going to reach their potential. So worth cashing in on some of them. Um, like I mentioned, the likes of Odan, or Ondan, sorry, currently on his way out, Ducker also leaving the club. So we're already planning some of these players. Good news for us is the big issue with transfers isn't going to be until the end of next year. I kind of want to apologize for this being a longer episode, but I feel like we've been here before with transfer specials where I apologize for them being longer ones. And the reality is I'll do it again. So I've been told that you shouldn't say sorry unless you mean you won't do it again. I will do this again. I know some people like these longer transfer specials, so I guess it's fine. No offers for Moon. No one wants to by the moon. Apparently, his wage demands are in excess of what they're willing to pay for. You know what? You and me both, Torquay. We're, we're in the same boat here. Suppose the good news is now, he's, he doesn't want a new contract and he's not unhappy anymore, so I'll just remove his transfer listedness and m maybe he'll just be happy. Sam Davis, another one of the youngsters from the youth team who's just too old, just selling him for 500 quid. Money. I mean, is that profit, technically? It's Technically profit, probably lost money because of his wages and stuff, but he's only on £20 a week, it's fine. Andan has rejected another offer for another club. I'm just going to release him. How much was it? 2,500 quid. Get him gone. I have recently started editing transfer specials as I go, so I record a bit edit it, record a bit, edit it. I've recorded three hours of footage and edited it. 52 minutes long. 52 minutes, we've made one signing. Uh, this video will probably be over an hour long at this point. Yeah, deal with it. I say deal with it. We've just played the last preseason game of the season. We play Fleetwood in a week. We play Fleetwood in a week, bloody hell. Fleetwood update, by the way. Good news, they've sold their one good player for a load of money to Salford. £325,000 they sold him for. Um, it does mean that their current first team has, well, no players over the age of 19. Being real for a moment, I think we might see a record for the lowest points total. How are they in this situation? Look at the morale! Bow your head. It's a sad moment. The duck is leaving the building for, for absolutely nothing. We signed him on a free... 
he leaves on a free. Goodbye, my friend. Have fun. Ring, 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 ring. Hello? Who's that? Oh, it's Newtown. They made a bid on Abbas. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it's happening again. They've already signed two strikers from me. Are they just trying to sign all my strikers? They've made a, made a bid for Abbas of up to 135000 They offered significantly less than that when I sold the Moyotunde. I'm going to be very cheeky here. I'm just going to ask for a stupid amount. 800000 They've not told me to piss off. This is concerning. Abbas's agent is saying he isn't interested in a move. I think when he sees the money they're willing to offer, he might well be interested. How about 650000 I feel like we're getting closer. At least they're patient negotiators at Newtown. 550k, 40% of any profit. They've accepted that. Mate, please go to Newtown. I'm really sorry. Well, the attempt to get him to go to Newtown, uh, he's not that happy. He's told me he has no interest. It's a waste of everyone's time. Um, it's £550,000. I'm accepting the deal. If he turns them down, I'll be sad. If he goes to them... <laughs> I might have to go and sign a striker after everything that's just happened. I mean, on the one hand, I'm not in the business of selling my best players. On the other hand, it's £550,000 for a guy we signed a year ago. And as good as Abbas is, there's got to be other Abbas's out there. I'm looking at some of the strikers available. Whether or not these guys would actually want to join us, pro probably not, but... Yeah, there, there's some good striking options out there, and it's not like we don't already have some good strikers in our team currently. In fact, one of the players I've got in on trial, Collie here, is not a bad player. The only reason I'm not signing him is because I don't really need a striker. Or at least I didn't until Abbas is going. And to be fair, I think we probably could do a little bit better than this guy. Saying all of that, Abbas has told me he has no interest in going. I kind of just have to hope that Newtown roll up, open up a suitcase full of money, and he just is convinced. Portsmouth have made another bid for Hull Chuddy. They know the deal by now. It's 150,000. 150,000 and you can have a Hull Chuddy. Goodbye, Portsmouth again. One day they'll learn. I've just completely autopilot picked captains here. I've stripped Gucci of vice captaincy and given it to Callum Goldsmith. To be fair, Goldsmith is a very good leader and stuff, so maybe it's fine. Also, Ngoba should probably go on a leadership course. Hopefully the board grant that. Okay, he is going on a leadership course. Everyone, lodge it in your memory. Seven leadership. We'll see if it goes up in three months' time. If Abbas does leave for £500,000, I don't actually know what the plan is. I've kind of accepted that bid because it feels like it's too good to turn down. But yeah, I don't know what the plan would be. I, we'll figure it out, I guess. That's usually the Rugby Town way. Breaking news, Abbas has turned down Newtown. So that whole saga, potentially selling our star striker, doesn't matter, it's not going to happen. I feel like for tomorrow's episode, I'm just going to do a kind of a weird Christmassy episode. It'll kind of be a live commentary special where we do the Fleetwood game and then maybe I just do all the talky and transfer bits between maybe Chesterfield and Telford as well within a, a longer Christmas episode. That might just be the plan. Although as we've seen from my planning during this transfer special when it comes to the actual transfers, it's been pretty bloody tragic. It's weird, right? I'm just looking through the defensive midfielders we've got scouted. There are some okay players here. Mabaya not terrible not amazing just has a few negatives Alex Patterson who I've got on trial no idea why my scouts have scouted and rated him so highly he's come on trial and now we've decided he's a star and a half player and he definitely is that um yeah I don't know I look through these center backs there's no one who I feel like I desperately need to sign to the point where I'm kind of just happy to be patient which I know doesn't really make for a great transfer special but I feel like that is one of the great dilemmas I mean, at the end of the day, the question I have to ask myself is, do people watch the transfer specials for, like, transfer specifically? Is it to see just the behind the scenes, the squad building, the planning, the frustration, the, you know, how I find players? Maybe today's been fine. I feel, I feel like I have to sign someone, but I have three days. I just realized I had my filter set to interested. I hadn't checked it recently on Doubtful. There's actually a few new players here that I could have a look at. Nico Lawrence. Looks good. Like, quite good. He's scouted. Very good rating for the senior team. He's more of a centre-back than a defensive mid, but he could definitely play defensive mid for you. I mean, if Moon ends up leaving the club, this guy would just be the replacement for Moon, right? I mean, he's way better than Moon. I should be making a bid for this guy. How much does his agent think he's going to want? 1.6 to £2,000 a week. Oh, I have to hope that's miles wrong. I don't think he's going to lower his demands. I mean, we might as well just make an offer, right? But, I mean, he's like a very, very good fit. He wants 
Four thousand. No, walk away. I mean, I, I, I thought I'd solved everything, and I just—that's hurt. That's. I thought I'd found someone finally. Now that I've got it set to doubtful again, if I just untick defense midfielder. Is there any new players here? I feel like I've become quite well versed with the players in this list. Macaulay Gillespie. I think I've just butchered his name com completely, but here is a man who, I mean, he's not a bad center back, left footed. I'm kind of just tempted to get the ball moving on this and potentially I just move Moon into defensive midfielder. I mean, saying all of this, Macaulay is better than Moon anyway. So if Moon wants to leave, may maybe I'd just bring in McCauley. McCauley, please don't hurt me. He wants to be a star player. He's old. You're an old man. You shouldn't want too much money. He wants £2,300. I mean, it hurts. I want it known for the judge and jury who watch this video. I really did try and sign players. Like, I really, really have scoured. And there's just no one who tickles my pickle. I'll be honest, it has dawned on me. I've not actually looked at players that are just loan listed. I suppose I could find a defensive midfielder who's loan listed, maybe, sign them. And then if I find a better player who I can sign permanently, I just terminate their loan, I guess. Who, who is a good defensive midfielder? I'll tell you what, if there's just one mad defensive midfielder here who I should have signed ages ago, I'm going to be annoyed. I'm just looking through these players and they're just so unremarkable. I feel like that's a harsh way of phrasing it, but there's no one who's getting me excited here. I mean, of all the players I've looked at, Scott Martin is the most exciting to potentially loan. He's on a thousand pounds a week at Hamilton. They want me to pay all his wages. I'm not doing it. I've done many transfer specials over the years. I don't know if I've ever done a transfer special where I didn't sign anyone. Should I just go and sign the guy who's on a pound a week? Then I can say I did actually buy a player. He plays winger. I don't play with wingers. I'm now just looking at players aged at most 19, so by world reputation. I think this might be rock bottom. How many wives do you reckon this guy has? Prince Henry. He's not King Henry yet, so I guess the answer's probably zero. Or, or maybe his dad's still in power. Yeah, you don't become a prince into a king by getting married. That's not how it works. This guy reminds me of a friend I had called Ismail, who, uh, yeah, he slammed a door on me on my hand, and I said, Ow, lad, me hand. <laughs> Yeah, this is rock bomb, isn't it? This really is rock bomb, this episode. The season starts today. The season starts today. Or oh, Christmas Day. Next episode for you guys. <sighs> I've not signed anyone. Now, on one hand, I could have just signed players for the sake of it. And there are now actually a few players on my radar who, if their wage demand's lower, I will go out there and sign. I hope this hasn't been a disappointment of a transfer special, mostly because I know people enjoy my suffering. So there's been plenty of that. Yeah, we end the transfer window for this year with one signing and it was a backup goalkeeper. I've had some really good transfer windows at this club. So far, this is one of the worst. Although, last year we did get a few signings over the line after the season started when players wage demands lower. Of course, on the one hand, yes, we are the favourites for promotion. On the other, the board expectation is to attempt to avoid relegation. On the other, our best player and our captain and Goma has a release clause if we don't get promoted. So really, I could do with getting promoted this coming year. I don't know what to make of today. What I would say is if you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you got halfway through the video, don't forget to leave your comment about the thing we talked about. If you skip to the end of the video, you don't know about the thing. Go, go find the thing. It's in the middle of the video somewhere. Besides all of that... I appreciate you guys watching. I hope my suffering was somewhat delightful. Hopefully you enjoyed this adventurous summer transfer window where we sign no one. We've sold lots of players. We've got loads of money in the bank. And yeah, next episode, we kick off the season against a team that have £11 million in the bank balance. Sorry, if they had a takeover, have they had a takeover? How have they got £11 million in the bank balance suddenly? How has this happened? You're in administration. I don't know what's going on with Fleetwood. We'll find out tomorrow. I'll see you guys for that then. I'm having a meltdown. I've not signed anyone. This isn't even a real transfer special. Goodbye.